Why, hello, nerds, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for making it to yet another Legend of Dragoon video. And this one, my friends, is a big, big episode. This is the end of Disc 3. This, my friends, is what I like to call Revelations, where a lot of questions are going to be answered and some even bigger questions are going to be raised, but this is not one you are going to want to miss. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I sincerely appreciate you guys, and I can't wait to see your reactions live, uh, especially to those who have never played this game and have never seen it. Anyways, in the last episode, we tackled everything that we could do in the snowfield, including defeating the Polter Armor, the optional boss that we can get there, and getting a badass sword for Mr. Dart. And, uh, well, you know what's going on in this episode. We're here in Capital City, Velweb, and let's go. Guys, I'm so excited for this episode. Trust, it's a good one. But look at this place, absolutely dismantled and destroyed. And our first random encounter that we can get in, let's see. Who are we facing? Oh, oh boy. Okay, I don't, <laughs> listen. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie Small Soldiers, but these Maximum Volt guys look like, uh, I, I'm gonna put an image of him on the screen because I don't know what his name was, but he looks, I, they look to me like that guy. That's all I'm saying. Uh, these are Thunder Elementals with 700 health, uh, which is actually quite a doozy. And of course, they're not weak to any magic because they're, you know, Thunder. Uh, and they have an 8% chance of dropping the Flash Hall. Mostly, though, they're just going to hit us with Sparknet and Thunderbolt and uh, potentially some Iron Smash stuff. That's pretty much it for these guys. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, those guys, like I said, do have a chance of dropping the Flash Hall, which is okay. And <laughs> oh, look at that. Both of them had their 8% chance and they both dropped Flash Hall, which is actually unfortunate because I just don't have enough room in my inventory. So we're just not going to get any of those. Oh, that's funny. Anyways, let's continue on. Look at, oh my God. Isn't this place just incredible? Look at the, like, magic is still emanating from these weapons there. I wonder what that is. What a... This place is just so cool. Anyways, we can keep running this way. We will get into a random encounter. Hopefully against something new. And it was not. Anyways, we can head up... Wait. Can we go this way? Oh, we can! Of course we can. Right here, we can get a chest, but I can't carry any more items! And we can pick up a attack, attack ball. So useless. Anyways, we can head up here. I know it's very, very obvious that that door's there. I was just, I was just trying to play. Forget it. Look at, the, there's two vendors below us. I hope that we get to meet them. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can find a way down. Oh, there is a way. Oh, random encounter. Come on. And we do have new enemies. We have the spring hitter and the terminator enemy. The spring hitters. Uh, kind of a big deal with these guys. They can actually steal from you just like the crafty thieves and flee. So you want to make sure that you, one, nail your additions, and two, uh, kill those first because they, they can be super, super annoying. They have an 8% chance of dropping a healing fog. They, uh, have no elemental whatsoever, and they have 400 health. So we can, we can take these down. And the Terminator enemy has an 8% chance of dropping... There we go. An item was stolen. Uh, has an 8% chance of dropping a total vanishing. It, it has no element whatsoever and has 432 health. And of course, Miru is going to go ahead and finish off the one that stole stuff from us. How dare they? 150 SP every single time that goes off. Absolutely beautiful. Other than that, a normal fight with nothing to worry about. But anyways, we can head down here. And we can actually talk to those two brothers. We've actually seen, these are the, some of the Quattro brothers we've seen before. Uh, brother, there are no customers here. Uh, I'm not doubting your word though. Mm, don't worry. Mm, believe me, there are always customers, even in this kind of place. Okay, I believe you, brother. Uh. You're right, brother. There are really customers. It's all due to the skills of my passionate merchant soul. You have to learn from this. I sell weapons and I sell items. We are peddlers. It must be fated that we would meet here. Why don't you take this chance to buy something? Let me thank you in advance. That's a really hard, that's hard to do those voices. Anyways, we can talk to the item guy first. 
see what he has for us and maybe hey we can sell some stuff to him because that might be a little bit more important considering that we are full on inventory he of course sells the typical stuff that they have sold uh, the entire game now i do uh, speaking of selling stuff this actually does bring to mind i highly highly recommend holding on to your panic bells and your poison needles and stuff like that just those two in particular those are going to be some pretty useful items for taking down some unique monsters that we haven't yet encountered but that is i would say to save those the stunning hammer and everything else though uh feel free to sell them and what about the weapon shop we already saw Segundo and Quartro. Remember, those were the guys that were in this uh, Cashua Glacier before we fought the uh, the Windigo. Uh, the arm, the weapon shop, armor shop, whatever you want to call it here, does sell a heavy mace in case you missed it. But mostly the Partisan is what we want here for Albert. Even though I'm not really using Albert right now, we'll go ahead and equip that on him, uh, which will increase by his his attack by seven, which is pretty nice. Uh, we already have Giganto armor and we already have energy girdles. This is, I believe, the first time that we've been able to buy these, if I'm not mistaken, even though we did get a bunch from the uh, the big bandit dudes over in the home of Gigantos. We can also pick up the Giganto ring, same that we could have before. Um, but there's, uh, they're okay. They're like the magical ring or magic ring, but for... Uh, the physical attributes, attack and defense, which are very, very strong. Don't get me wrong. The attack and defense going up by 87. Uh, it's very good. I just think that there are better accessories, so I, I I wouldn't really recommend that. And because physical attacks do so little anyways in this game, uh, compared to the magic, right? It just doesn't really feel like we need those. Anyways, we can leave those guys. No reason to hang out with them anymore. Say, hasta la vista. And we also don't have any boss fights for a little while, so no need to stock up on some items. Start. Look at that huge battery. A what? Humans shot huge arrows from there, aiming at the tower of Flanville. And back then, humans thought this way, that the arrow would not only shear the darkness that covers the earth, but also shear their corrupted hearts which were accustomed to being ruled. Why are you suddenly starting to say this? I don't know. I still cannot tell. But if we meet the guy who claims he is Diaz, I think we can find out the reason. I'm speaking nonsense again. Let's keep going. A hero from history is waiting for us. What? So they used to shoot arrows out of this towards... Don't forget, a lot of the wingly cities were floating cities. Very interesting. Of course that's how they would have to attack, right? Also, look at this chain over there. That's super cool. All right, random encounter. Is it against things that we are missing? Of which there are only two, actually. And it was not. Anyways, let's head this way. God, I love this area. So It's so cool. The capital Velweb. Look at, look at what, ooh, what's over there? Oh, wait, what? Huh? Surely. I have been waiting for you. You're Shirley. Why? Why are you here? You ascended to heaven, I thought. Before that, I had something I had to take care of in here, Velweb. I couldn't leave the trapped souls alone in this world. Are you talking about... Yes. The four souls of the Dragoons who lost their lives during the Dragon Campaign. Their souls were drawn to Mayfill. The gate of the Inferno from which you can never return is requesting the souls of the Dragoons. The Death City Mayfill? I thought it was destroyed. I don't know how, but it is true that the gate of the Inferno is open. Rose, I made their souls inert and anchored them in this place. But there is a limit to my power. After you meet Diaz, please visit this place again and lead their souls to heaven. What? The souls of the dragoons are wandering somewhere in the towers. But we have to take care of something else now. Let's go find Diaz. Four? But there are seven. So, surely, that's five. 
Rose, we know, was there. That's six. Oh, who's seven? Weird. Anyways, we're actually going to go into these towers right now. Uh, just for a quick... There's something quick that we're going to need to get here. And I want to point out that the seven towers of the Dragoons, this, this area that we're in right now, this is an area that we will have to come back to. We have no choice. Uh, we can't do these side quests or these side bosses or whatever you want to call it. We can't do it right now. We'll literally just be prevented from doing it, which is too bad. Miru has finally hit Dragoon level five and learned the Blue Sea Dragon spell. Oh my gosh. Now, before I remove Miru from the party for the time being, uh, I do want to show off that Dragoon magic just because it's, it's, you, got, you guys are in. It's so cool. Anyways, we want to head up here. This is actually Shirley's tower here. There is a small hole in the middle of the relief. This must have come off from here. A Stardust! The only Stardust that you can find here in Velweb. That is number 46, I believe. Only four more remaining in the entire game. Uh, this is Shirley's temple. This is, or Shirley's tower. This is where she resided. This is where she lived. Uh, as you can see, it is now destroyed. But there was a Stardust just waiting for us in there. Now, something that you'll actually notice, and I don't know if I'll be able to show it, is outside these towers, there is actually on the, on the, do you see the, um, uh, to, at the very bottom of the screen, there's like a, a stone or an emblem of some kind, uh, like a spirit, if you will. That one below us actually looks like a jade color, uh, and Shirley's is kind of gone, but there was, you can tell that there was one there, right? So let's actually head in here, and I want to show you guys just exactly what this looks like. See, this place is entirely intact. Whoa. For me, life is... Death is... That is one of the dragoons who lived during the dragon campaign. Shirley said that she's making them inert. That's why it doesn't recognize us. There's no reason to be here now. Very, very interesting. So somehow these spirits are still in our time or in their time. So you see the top of the towers here. If you look, the very top uh, is green. The other one is white to sh symbolize the different dragoons. I think that's really cool and just something to point out. And obviously every dragoon has a tower, uh, especially the four that we're going to have to defeat. And they have these little scenes where they appear. And I will end up showing all of them. But first, I want to show you... This new enemy, the Witch, a light-based enemy, which we rarely ever see, with 360 health. Now, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be able to use any any of my magics here because I need to show you Miru's brand new level 5 blue sea dragon magic. I should also mention that the Witch has an 8% chance of dropping the Angel's Prayer item in case uh, you didn't buy any for some reason. All right, Miru, let's see your ble blue sea dragon. It is a 100% magic spell water, of course, single target. So let's go ahead and focus the witch here just for funsies. I just want to show you how cool this looks. Look at that. What's very interesting to me is that the blue sea dragon that's used in the spell is not regal. So regal was a different dragon uh, that was used in, in some way, just like, uh, just like, you know, Fairbrand isn't the isn't the dragon for Albert, right? Which, of course, we haven't seen because he's not that level yet. But I thought I would just point that out. Uh, that spell is very, very pretty. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go visit every tower and we'll just edit to the parts where I actually show you the scenes. I don't like to be alone. Where is everybody? Look at how beautiful Damia's room is. Let's move on. There's no reason for being here now. 
absolutely beautiful. Remember, she's the one that is half mermaid, half human. With a blue top to her tower. Anyways, what's next? Our last remaining random encounter in the entirety of Velweb. This here is a succubus enemy that has a 2% chance of dropping the platinum collar. The succubi have 484 health and they are darkness based enemies. Miru needs to recover some health real quick. They are also taller than everybody except Kongol, which is just an interesting little thing. Not that big of a deal, but I think it's cool. It does have an ability to use, or the ability to use Bewitchment, uh, but we're not gonna have to worry about that because Kongol is gonna one-shot it. <laughs> and hopefully, hey, drop a Platinum Collar, why not? Kongol has leveled up his Dragoon to level four in that random encounter with the Succubus. Now, this tower is very interesting to me. This one here... Now, of course, Kongol doesn't actually learn any magics or anything at Dragoon level four, but I thought I would point that out, that he did reach it, finally, one more level. Uh, and then, and then he's pretty much gone, except for, you know, mastering his Bone Crush, of course. Uh, also, I want to point out this tower. This is the red Dragoon Spirit one here. Uh, I, I just thought that this one is particularly interesting, because as far as we know, the red Dragoon, now, now it's Dart, of course, but the original one, huh. Is the original one not here? Is it not one of the four? So whoever was the original Red Dragoon Spirit is for some reason just not here. Why is that? Anyways, we have a Earth, the Earth one, the Congo, the, the Golden Spirit in this tower here. Let's see what his room looks like. I think you're going to be surprised. Look at this. Belzac. Children. We will protect your future. I love, also there's a typo here. It says Rose and then it says Rose. <laughs> Let's move on. There's no reason to be here now. Only one more of the inert dragoons remains. And the final tower, the final inert dragoon soul is that of Ken Zaz whose room looks really creepy, dude. Anybody? Just satisfy me. Let's move on. There's no reason to be here now. Anyways, that is all of the four spirits that are inert here and their little scenes that show up. Next time we come here, we will do battle against those four, but I think it's very, very interesting, my friends, that, uh, that the fire dragoon isn't here the red spirit dragoon very strange and we just head back down uh from the tower that we uh started the whole place in which is where Shirley was there's also a save point here if you so choose to use it but we are fastly approaching the end of disc three we don't need no save point anyways finally we can head out in this oh hello Shirley uh after you meet Diaz, please visit this place again and lead their souls to heaven. Absolutely, Shirley. Absolutely. In to where potentially the Emperor Diaz is waiting for us. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate this map here and like this upside down? I, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, and also just like it's so ominous looking. I love it. Also, I want to point out that uh, just like the snowfield, the enemies here are pretty good experience. Uh, but like I said, there are just going to be so many better opportunities in Disc 4, which, of course, we're almost at. So I wouldn't worry too much about grinding on anything. Now, we're going to skip this door because there's actually nothing there. And we're going to run to this one instead. And let's head this way. Random encounters, man. They're so frequent here. We're already in the red. I've barely done anything. And we can grab... Rose's hairband, which you might have remembered me talking about in the uh, Polter armor when I was talking about that fight. If that actually is an ex uh, a headpiece that it, uh, ignores death, instant death attacks, just like the talisman, but it doesn't take up an accessory slot. Of course, it would take up a legend cast slot, but I thought I would point that out. Pretty useful. Anyways, we want to head back to this big stairwell here. 
and we're going to skip the third floor this we're going to skip this door because that's actually where we need to go we're going to go to this bottom one here to get the last piece of treasure the last item that we can get in the entirety of the capital city bell web that is the last item my friends that you will get in the entirety of disc three can you believe that we are we are approaching revelation my friends all right now we'll use this door which will lead us to where emperor diaz is sitting waiting for us to approach my friends this is it this is the end of disc three shauna she can fly hello what diaz here are all three divine moon objects There are no more obstacles to hinder our utopia. Release the girl. Fine. Nice catch, Dar. Diaz! What are you going to do with the divine moon objects? Didn't you hear it from Lloyd? <laughs> My only desire is the advent of the last species. If you are the true Diaz, you should know what that implies. Total destruction. What? What? What are you... Lloyd. Well done bringing me the moon gem, moon dagger, and moon mirror. Now we can let the Virage embryo the god of destruction, the last species we desire, the true Virage, arise. I will create the utopia you wanted after the Virage embryo purges the world. Everything so far was an overture to that. Lloyd, he showed you a false utopia from the beginning. You deceived me. My utopia exists in the future of this world. What I desire is the creation of the future, not the destruction of this world. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> what? No, ah! oh, Lloyd! Diaz, what are you thinking? I don't need to hide anymore. What do you mean? Guys, get ready. Hold on to your butts. It's been a while. Rose Dot. kidding me one of the biggest twists i think i've ever seen in a video game zeke is alive zeke is dart's father is that really you dad you died with mel buframa on each other's swords rose what are you talking about now i can tell you everything The beginning of the world was an absolute nothingness. Darkness. The creator Soa sowed a seed to the earth. This is the plan of Soa, a created all species, the birth of the divine tree. Eventually, 
The fruit of the divine tree ripened and fell to the ground to fill the world with life. Gigantos from the 97th fruit. Menentos from the 99th fruit. Dragons from the 105th fruit. Humans from the 106th fruit. Winglies from with magic power from the 107th fruit. And at the end, the Virage Embryo, the god of destruction, was to be born from the 108th fruit. Soa desired the destruction and regeneration of the world by the Virage Embryo, the god of destruction. However, 11,000 years ago, Winglies found out the tragedy waiting for them, and sealed the 108th fruit by separating the flesh and soul. The flesh of the god, the flesh of the Virage Embryo, was taken away from the Winglies as the moon that never sets, that glows in the sky. And the soul of the god was captured in the crystal sphere, and Melbuframa kept it. Yes, to withdraw unlimited magic power from that, and to conquer the other creatures. However, even with unlimited magic power, the domination was not eternal. Humans arose with dragoons in front. Nothing was their match because they obtained the power of the dragon. And finally, they drove Melbu Frama into a corner. I felt certain of human... My victory. And it was in the next moment the spell of petrification cast by Melbu captured me. I have waited for 11,000 years. Time. Almost eternal dissolved the spell of Melbu, and I was released from captivity. Days spent with Rose became the eternal past. And I lived as the father of Dart in this age, until the tragic day it eat. I cannot believe it. I am here. That is a fact. Then, both Dad and Rose are the heroes of the Dragon Campaign? Yes, but that's not all. Humans made a mistake. Silly humans destroyed the Crystal Sphere, which was the container of the soul along with the royal capital, Cadessa. The Virage Embryo, the god of destruction, was exultant. It could now be born. The free soul released from the crystal sphere started to wander in order to go back to the body left in the moon that never sets to be born as the last god and to destroy the world. The soul without a body possesses a human body and heads for the moon that never sets by repeating the transmigration every 108 years. You now know the soul of the god of destruction is the moon child. The truth of the moon child and the legend. Count 108 years, and when the moon that never sets glares in red, the moon child descends to the earth and shall give a holy blessing to the world. The holy blessing is the destruction. The destruction is Soa's will. This is the fate that rules the future of the world. But there was one dragoon who found out about it. In order to deter the birth of the God of Destruction, she has had to kill the Moon Children by stopping her own time. She was even called a demon. That is the true self of Rose, the Black Monster. What? Rose is the Black Monster. Tell me it's not true. The moon child has to be killed, and the people around it too, before they become, before they become the servants of the god of destruction. Neat, too? For 11,000 years, there have been no exceptions. God! Why you? Why do you have to be the black monster? That's it. Whoa, what are you going to do? What are you, what are you, what? Let me tell you one more truth. Rose, 
You thought the Princess Luvia you killed 18 years ago was the Moonchild. But it's not true. What? Luvia had a twin sister. No, no! Shauna is the Moonchild. Shauna is the soul of the Virage Embryo, the God of Destruction. I'll dissolve the signet of the moon that never sets and cross it with the moon child. Now, I have everything in my hands. Release Shauna! <laughs> and are you going to kill her? To save the world? I'll kill her! Oh, hey, Rose, don't do that, no! This is the limitation of humans. Seek! Why? All is the will of the creator Soa. My hands start the world, and my hands end the world. Whoa! Costume change! Yes, fate desires it. Dad, wait! Shauna! Chapter 4, Moon and Fate. Welcome, my friends, to the final disc, the final chapter of The Legend of Dragoon. We... Oh boy, did we just learn a lot. Rose is the black monster that Dart has been hunting his entire life. The love of his life is the moon child that she is destined to destroy. His father wants to bring about the end of the world? His father is one of the ancient dragoons? Of course that, no wonder why he had the dragoon spirit. I'm totally beaten. We came all this way and we cannot go back. Yes, we did. No need to return. The city of Wingleys, Rose said, is just over there. What was it called? Eulura? Eulara? Eulara. I hope we can find out what we should do there. I hope so too. This is awkward. This is very, very awkward. I guess Rose will still fight with us, even though... Uh, you know. Welcome, my friends, to the Death Frontier. This is actually a very, very big zone. Uh, it's huge. It's a maze. It's a giant desert. Uh, and it is also one of the best places for leveling and everything else that you'll do in this game. Who could imagine there's such a place under the ground of the desert? It must be a cavity created when the water dried up. The world is going on without knowing anything. Without knowing until the end. I wonder if this little world has experienced an end like that. It's not determined yet that our world will end. That's true. We are still here. And we will keep fighting. Now, what's really cool about this area is all of the encounters that you will find here are, uh, they're all, um, uh, they're physical encounters. So you actually have to, you know, fight them. So anyways, I wanted to show that there's caves here. You can actually see two chests. The big trick with this whole area is that there are a ton of items and it's a huge maze, uh, but we need to basically fall into these caverns that you just saw so that we can we can get those items, which means that we'll repeatedly be put back and have to, and have to do a bunch of stuff and like, it, it, it can kind of get annoying, but it's actually a pretty cool area. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and save uh, and we'll tackle the Death Frontier in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching the end of Disc 3 in uh, what I like to call Revelations. Absolutely crazy episode. Uh, so much was revealed, and I hope you guys... I hope your mind was as blown as mine was the first time that I played this game, because I was like, well, I did not see that coming. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, huge shout out to those of you watching the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys. Can't wait to see your reactions. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the Virage Embryo.